Hey everyone, this is Dare Skybound bringing you a tutorial in crafting in Final Fantasy XIV. Crafting is very simple. In order to successfully craft an item, you merely have to fill out the progress bar to 100%. The quality bar affects the chances of producing a high quality item. It doesn't have to be completely filled out, but the further you get across that bar, the higher your chances become with incrementally increasing amounts towards the end. This means that getting halfway through the quality bar does not give you 50% chance of high quality, but a far lower number. But past that point, your increase of quality percentage is much more drastic than the earlier half. When producing collectibles, the only difference is that the quality meter becomes a collectability meter. And instead of percentage, the further you get across the bar, the higher the collectability of the item is. Just pass what you require for turn-ins, and that's all you need. And finally, there's your durability meter. Your amount of durability that you have on an item will depend on the item itself. Each move that expands your progress or quality meter will reduce your durability by 10 points. Some moves, however, will actually reduce this cost by half meaning that you only expend 5 points of durability for each progress or touch move that you use. It is important to understand that even if you have 5 durability remaining, you can still use a move that requires 10 durability, providing that it finishes the item. So as long as that last move makes the progress meet 100%, your item will be successful instead of breaking. But anytime you reach 0 durability and it does not finish the item, then your crafting will fail and there's only a very minimal chance you will get the materials back to you. Now I've covered the very basis of crafting. There's only one last element of the interface that's important to understand, and that's the condition. Randomly, while you are crafting, the condition may change to good or excellent followed by poor. Each one of these conditions has a different effect on the quality of the move that you use during that time. The good condition will improve any quality-based move by 50%, while the excellent will improve it by 300%, but the move right after that will decrease your ability for quality by 50%. The condition has no effect on any other moves, so moves that may influence progress have no effect on condition, so they are best to use during a poor situation or normal so that you can get the best benefit by using good and excellent condition when you're hitting hard with your touch moves that are improving quality. Whenever you are trying to craft a high quality item, the one skill you must always remember is inner quiet. This move continuously improves the impact of your quality based moves and can even be used by some moves to perform even greater acts of quality improvement. Every quality move that you do when inner quiet is activated will increase the stack of inner quiet. This improves your control stat which directly influences your quality. There are several moves that make use of these inner quiet stacks to drastically improve your quality or even return CP to you. For lower levels, at level 15 with Carpenter, you gain access to the ability Rumination. This ability restores CP based on the number of stacks of inner quiet you have accumulated. The CP can then be used to restore durability or help you progress further in case you have already run out before the end of your craft. At level 50 Carpenter, however, you gain access to the ability Byrgot's Blessing. This move allows for an incredible quality boost based on the number of inner quiet you have. With a bonus of 20% for every stack of inner quiet, with a maximum of 11 stacks of inner quiet, Byrgot's Blessing can even exceed the amount of quality that an item can have. Now imagine the impact this would have when combined with various moves like Great Strides, which doubles the efficiency of the next touch move. Maybe even throw in Goldsmith's level 50 move, Innovation, which increases control by 50%, which has already been drastically increased by 11 stacks of Inner Quiet. Then, maybe you even use the move Observe, which allows you to skip a step just in case the condition changes to good or excellent. And the ability that you have done allows for absolutely incredible amounts of quality to come out. If you consider all these features, you can see how drastically the effect that Inner Quiet has just built upon itself it can be multiple times of what the potential quality that an item can even have, even from a low level perspective. No matter how you cut it, inner quiet is how you craft. Ignoring that will not allow you to make any high quality items at higher levels.
Whenever I start crafting, the first move I use is Comfort Zone. It comes from level 50 Alchemist, and the benefit of that is that though you spend 66 CP at the start, in total you gain 80 back. That's a 14 CP gain for free after 10 turns. I then immediately use Inner Quiet to ensure that I have it on so that every time I use a touch move, I gain another stack of Inner Quiet. You will also notice that whenever a good or an excellent pops up that I'm not ready to use my progress or touch moves, that I use this ability called Tricks the Trade. That allows me to consume that good or excellent for 20 bonus CP. Now the way I craft might not be the best out there, but I feel it's the easiest. I compartmentalize the way that I craft, which means that I basically take a 6 crafting step for any time I want to increase progress or quality. I will make use of Steady Hand or Steady Hand 2, which has 5 turn duration, followed by Waste Knot, which has a 4 turn duration. Steady Hand and Steady Hand 2 improve the success rate of a move by 20 and 30% respectively. This means that a move that normally has 50% chance likelihood to succeed will actually be increased to up to 80% likely to succeed. This makes many moves that are just last ditch efforts or just freebies a very viable source of improvement to quality and progress. I also make use of Waste Knot, which is a pretty efficient way to basically reduce the durability cost of your moves. By doing the Steady Hand and Waste Knot combo, the next four moves only cost 20 durability instead of 40, and also have a significant increase of the chance to succeed. During these four moves, I will take full advantage of the condition. During a good or excellent, I will make sure to use a quality move that also doubles my increase in inner quiet. During a poor condition, I make sure to use progress moves. Since it only affects quality, it has no effect on the progress. Outside of these four moves, however, I make sure that any good or excellent, I use tricks of the trade. So I always gain CP back and only use my progress and quality moves when I'm fully ready to fully utilize their potential. Now what you are seeing is not always my best work at crafting. I'm just trying to show off the skills and how they work in certain situations and such. I'm not going to explain exactly what I'm doing at every point, but I'll use my cursor to show off what it means and so you can examine the ability yourself and see how it applies. Now here what you're seeing is that I forgot Inner Quiet and started my rotation. This happens occasionally, but it's important to remember that Inner Quiet is vital. So even though it messes with the rotation and removes a chance to use a move, do it anyways and just make sure you have Inner Quiet as soon as possible so that you can gain the full benefits of the ability. For those of you who started crafting in the Stormblood expansion, you will notice the move I'm using is called Patient Touch. This is a high risk, high reward ability that allows you to get two inner touches without it having to be on a good or exceptional. The trade-off is that if you fail, you lose half your stacks of inner quiet. So it's best to use early on, probably before you have five stacks of inner quiet. Here, my condition has turned to excellent. I could use a stronger touch, but instead I decide I should get my inner quiet higher. This is because with Byrgot's Blessing, I can do far better in the end. Sometimes you even have to let an excellent go. It's important to understand that they are not the most critical part of your crafting is. Concentrating on an inner quiet will almost always get you further.
if you paid attention to my control from no inner quiet to 11 inner quiet, you will notice that with 11 inner quiet, the control is three times of what it was. If I further made use of the innovation skill, I would have 50% more. That's just the current level control and not the one I started with. Here you'll see me making use of all my abilities together to provide the ultimate move that I can. I'm using Innovation, 11 stacks of Inner Quiet, and Fire God's Blessing, along with Great Strides. The end result is 16,000 on an item that only needs 9,000. That's after already providing a lot of quality beforehand. This just shows you how strong that your Inner Quiet can become using the right abilities at the right time. It's important to know that in order to get some crafting abilities, you actually have to level a specific class to level 15 or 50. Here are some of the abilities that you can access and why I think they're important. Through Weaver, you can unlock careful synthesis. It has no CP cost, is always guaranteed to succeed, and is even further progress than standard. This makes it a very important and critical skill to have. Rumination and Byrgot's Blessing. They come from leveling up Carpenter and allow you to make full use of inner quiet stacks. Leveling up Alchemist allows you to get tricks of the trade in Comfort Zone. These abilities help you gain CP in the middle of crafting. Through Culinarian, we gain Hasty Touch and Steady Hand 2, allowing you better use of abilities that only have 50% chance. Through leveling up Leatherworker, you gain the ability of Waste Not, allowing you to use less durability for the moves. It's very simple and easy to use. By leveling Goldsmith to level 50, you gain the ability Innovation, giving 50% more to your control, which can be further improved through Inner Quiet, further allowing you to improve upon your final quality move. I hope this guide has helped you a little bit with understanding the crafting in Final Fantasy XIV. If you want to see more videos like this, or a guide on something else, then feel free to leave a comment. And be sure to check out my Machinima videos. The more viewers I get, the more I'll make videos. So if you enjoy them, be sure to like, comment, and spread the word. This is Dare Skybound, signing out.